Abu Dhabi's IHC takes a 15% stake in Burjil, and Boeing forecasts a doubling of its regional fleet in two decades. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Rami Akhraj. Abu Dhabi's international holding company bought a 15% stake in healthcare services provider Burjil Holdings as it continues to bolster and diversify its portfolio in the healthcare sector locally and regionally. IHC says the deal is one of the biggest of the GCC's healthcare sector in recent years, although no numbers have been shared. Brazil Holdings operates 16 hospitals, 23 medical centers, and 15 pharmacies in the UAE and Oman. It's planning a potential IPO on the Abu Dhabi Bourse this year. Boeing forecasts its Middle East passenger traffic and commercial fleet will more than double by 2041. It expects to see demand for 2,980 airplanes valued at $765 billion over the next 20 years. More than two-thirds of these deliveries will enable growth, while one-third will replace older aircraft with more fuel-efficient models. It says wide-body aircraft account for 43% of regional demand, the highest proportion of any region. Boeing anticipates aftermarket commercial services like maintenance and repair to be worth $275 billion. EFG Hermes has kicked off its 16th annual one-on-one -on -one conference in Dubai. The one-on-one -on -one conference aims to unlock prospects for global institutional investors and active fund managers to gain insights on key trends influencing frontier emerging markets. They're exploring investment opportunities through one-on-one -on -one meetings with C-suite executives representing prominent equities across four continents. The conference witnesses the participation of 205 companies from 30 three countries in direct meetings with over 655 institutional investors and fund managers representing 270 international institutions. The Lebanese pound has hit a new low against the U.S. dollar on the black market, a drop that coincides with bank closures this week due to heists by angry depositors. The pound sold at close to 38500 to the dollar today. The drop in recent days marks a record low for the beleaguered national currency. For decades, the Lebanese pound was pegged at 1500 to the dollar, meaning it's lost around 95% of its value since 2019. Bitcoin extended its losses today, losing more than $1,000 from yesterday's high under the cloud of more interest rate hikes. The crypto was trading around 5% lower in the $18,400 range today. The world's biggest virtual currency has lost 61% in value compared to a year ago when it was trading above $48,000. Other major cryptos also saw significant losses. The U.S. Federal Reserve will meet tomorrow and is expected to raise the interest rate by 75 basis points once again. The German Central Bank says it's increasingly likely that Europe's largest economy will shrink for a prolonged period. In its monthly report, it said the signs of a recession for the German economy are multiplying, and it warned of a broad-based and prolonged decline in economic output. The likely slump is blamed on supply-side constraints, namely reduced gas deliveries. Germany relied on Russia for 55% of its gas before the outbreak of the war. Let's take a look now at today's Forbes Real-Time Billionaires ranking. It tracks the daily ups and downs of the world's richest people. Our biggest winner today is Adani Industries' Gautam Adani. He's neck and neck with Bernard Arnault to take the top spot as the world's second wealthiest person. He's up $1.4 billion today with net wealth of $153.5 billion. As for Bernard Arnault, he's down $837 million today, but still with enough net wealth to stave off Adani at $154.4 billion. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. The world bade farewell to Queen Elizabeth II at a state funeral attended by leaders from around the globe. Huge crowds gathered in near silence to see the Queen's flag-draped coffin on a ceremonial journey through the packed streets of London, topped with the imperial state crown, her orb and scepter. Many people camped out for days to pay their final respects and to share a moment of history. The event was watched by billions around the world as the UK laid its longest reigning monarch to rest. I'm Rami Akhraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.